Hey guys, welcome to the Nick Buy YouTube page. You know what you need to do. You need to subscribe, you need to ring the bell, you need to like the page, you need to leave a comment. I appreciate you. All right, here we are. Thanks to the uh, to the magic of technology. I am, uh, Bo is in, you're in Idaho, right? You're in Idaho? Idaho Falls. Idaho Falls, okay. Uh, you're in Idaho Falls, I'm in Lincoln, and yet we are here for the people. We are we are going to make this happen. You are on. Uh, you're you're in Idaho Falls for work. I guess the most pressing question before I get to the sponsor reads: What is the thermostat at right now? Are we at sixty five? Are we? Could, could, did you take it to the brink of insanity? To Nick, like I am, So Idaho Falls, it's hot in Nebraska, right? Yes, it's cool here. It's like forty and fifty degrees. So the thermostat's turned off. And it's naturally at 62 degrees. Oh, wow. so I'm below the brink of insanity. Oh, that there's nothing quite like the natural 62 degrees that you you get. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I'm borderline, you know, when you're in your room, you get under the covers in clothes because you're that cold. Yes. But you sleep well. Isn't that I've gotten to the point where I when I go on the road, I want to be like obnoxiously cold. I take it as now some there's some hotels that like won't get let you go f any lower than like 64 or something yeah. like that. If I can, higher, yeah, I, I will. I will take that mug down to like. 59 You'll touch I, need to. I mean <laughs> if i get a call from the front desk like oh, we have seen that you have turned this down to uh the 50s can you uh, please leave the police it's uh we're we're concerned you're dead in there um <laughs> we didn't know your body temperature what uh i i've always i enjoy traveling by myself i'm way more i'm way more introverted than anybody would probably think i am Yes, you 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 definitely are a when you're out, you're out and you're letting it rip when you're talking yeah. to people and then you want to go be by yourself. And I'm I'm more that way, too, actually. I, yes. I be by yeah. myself. So, I mean, yeah, I'm like walking around Idaho Falls by myself. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> this is good. I, I enjoy it. I Well, I mean, we could have talked about this on the last pod. What does it say about me? And you've had a couple of these moments where I'm now 39 years old father of three, I had a weekend to myself, my kids, my wife, they were all out of town for the weekend. And now we went to our, our high school coaches retirement party, Jeff Smith, shouts out to coach Smith. We did that on Friday, but on Saturday, I could have done anything I wanted. I could have tailgated all day done. Any, I could have done anything. And you know what I did? I did nothing. I mowed the lawn. I worked out. I got food. I watched football. I hung out with my dog, Kobe, and we just did nothing. That's where I'm at with my life. It's, That's it's what I want to do. George thinking it's, I did nothing and it was everything I thought it could be, you know? And that's, <laughs> that's not, I think that like my wife is, is a very different than me in the sense of like, you know, she always talks about introvert, but she is an extrovert in the sense of she actually gets energy from people. So she doesn't want to recharge by going and being by herself for a day. That's not like, Oh, now I'm ready to go again. She just wants to be relaxed around people. I need to be by myself. For yeah. An hour. If I'm then, I, then I'm yes. good. Yes. And you're the same way. Like, so that's the difference I think between a real introvert and a real extrovert is introverts <laughs> recharge by there themselves we go. and extroverts can recharge people give them get them all juiced up you know like so, i like your you sneaky come with some like philosophical stuff at times that just that's not like, that sir i no, will no. pay 19.99 a month for your <laughs> newsletter and anything you have to tell me my friend i want it all i want uh, it all i got a bunch of stuff cooked up for you but real quick shouts out to pella windows and doors i got my koozie there it is pella uh if you are needing some new windows and doors let me help you out showrooms in lincoln and omaha great place to start or you can schedule a free in-home consultation, get a Pella expert out there. I think Tony White shows up, and he's going to put a game plan together for you. <laughs> three windows on the top, five in the middle, and then three on the bottom. It Hear me out. Hear me out. Rotating window, you don't know which one is coming up. We're going to walk up two windows. One falls back. The other one stays. We're just confusing the sunlight. We don't know what's going on. We're like, sir, what? 
I don't know what. <laughs> These are windows? <laughs> don't know what we're doing. But no, Tony White may or may not show up, but you're going to get a Pella expert out to your home, and he'll put a game plan together that uh, works for you. PellaOmaha.com is the website, PellaOmaha.com. And Shoot360 got the shirt rolling, baby. Membership-based basketball training facility for players of all ages and skill levels. We're under two weeks away. You can schedule a workout in our app once you become a member when it works for you. That's the beauty of it. If 3.30 works for you, if 6.30 works for you on Tuesday, whatever, you schedule a, a workout. 30 minutes of shooting on our automatic rebounding machines combined with our technology will get you better, faster, baby. And 30 minutes of ball handling and passing in our skills courts and passing wall combined with our patented technology. It's going to unlock your game. By the way, the kids love the skills courts. It's like a video game. Kids love it. Schedule your free official recruiting visit workout today at shoot360.com backslash Lincoln. That's shoot360.com backslash Lincoln. All right, Bo Rood and Idaho Falls. Did you see Matt Rule and, and Ben Scott talked about this as well, that they had a padded, full contact, like hard as hell practice yeah. on Sunday. Have you ever had a game happen on Saturday, and then on Sunday you guys are full pads, like like hammering each other? I'm gonna start day, there, and then I have some day other after a game. Day after a game, you out there just just banging heads, dog. The fact that I don't remember probably tells me that it's not the day after. Okay, I don't think the day after. No. Uh, because, I mean, that would have been a Callahan thing, and I, I feel like I would have remembered it, but I do not remember that. Because Ben Scott said he's never done that. And I, I'm i curious what you think about this, because this was kind of the first topic that, that popped into my head with, with hearing about that, is are, do you like – where I'm not sure how your, your the coaches you played for were in that, like, when you – got beat or you didn't play well or you played bad whatever you had like there was hell to pay at practice like you knew like next practice we are going to get absolutely murdered i don't know i'm i can only draw upon and reference like how i was coached but both my college coaches, Bill Self and Dana Altman, yeah. if we played bad bow or if we got blown out, like there was hell to pay at practice. Like some of the hardest, most intense, most emotionally draining, physically draining days of my athletic life. We're not games. We're not workouts or anything. They were practices after we lost. Yeah. I... I can't express, I cannot, let me look dead in the camera when I say this, I cannot express how big of an a-hole Bill Self was to us after we lost. Yeah. I cannot express how big of an a-hole Dana Altman was to us after we lost. These guys came in and were just going to crush us. I kind of like that. I kind of think you need that. What did you – so, first of all, two-part question to you before I pass it to you. Did that ever happen? Did you have anything like that, and do you like that? I, I mean, we had versions of it. Like, it's a little different with basketball and the the day after the game. I remember you telling me the, the Bill Stealth s- story about putting on the full football pads for basketball, basketball. practice. Yes. Like, that is a, a huge statement coming from a coach, right? So – I think that is the point though, right? So whether it's football or basketball, um, even if you don't do the day after a game for football, if it's, if it's then Monday and you have that practice and you really like, you know, then all of a sudden you're doing Oklahoma drill during the season, or you're doing like goal line, you know, you're doing the things that you stop doing uh, full speed to the ground in, in camp. Right. Uh, And the idea is it's to make a statement. It's to make a point, right? It's part of building a culture where what's acceptable and what's not getting your butts kicked by Michigan and just getting, you know, completely out physical. And and what we said in our, in our pod, I think uh, that's still in my head is it didn't feel like we were really like laying it all out there in that game, right? There was no Ben Stilley out there in the no. lines. There was no, there was no bloodbath like throwing punches back. We were just taking it. So I think 
that's why that's probably an important statement for Matt Rule to make is like, what is our standard? It's not that. So we better get back to the basic, which the basics, which is just physical football. I just, you know, you, you would think even scum, like I, I was, I was a competitive person. I wanted to win. I hated to lose, but even the most competitive person that, that loves to win, hates to lose. They, they sometimes need that extra little bit of like punishment to, to, to keep them on that path. Like I just, and, and, and you, you, it is football and basketball are different. So I, I mean, it's, it's very different. Like you, you can, I mean, we would have four hour practices with, with coach self where it was just, you know, it was crazy. I like, can't really do that in football. You know what I mean? Like it would be stupid. Like if today we're taping this on a Tuesday, like if Matt rule went four hours and they were just hammering each other, you know, like there, there's an element of like a physicality that, that there's like a limit to it, I suppose that you maybe can't like cross too far with it. But I just, I don't know. I, there's, I think it, it, there, there's a healthy bit of motivation where like, we can't lose this game because of like, like on a simple level, you go, I don't want to go to practice tomorrow and deal with bill self tomorrow. Like, I, I don't want to do that. Right. Like I want to yeah. win, but like, I don't want to, I'm not trying to deal with the wrath of, of bill self. If we lose this game, like I think any extra little bit of motivation is like a good thing. So I'm a fan of it, but I, that's, those are the I two things no, I played for. I have zero problems with it because there is truth to it. If you, if a coach has you do that, it means that he doesn't believe you're a tough enough team. He doesn't believe you're a physical enough team. You've gotten away from what you could be potentially. And a coach is trying to make you into what you could and should be. Uh, and, and it's in our nature to take the easy route. It is. Every person, football, basketball, whatever the sport is, it's the, the, the year gets long and we start getting laxed. That's what happens. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it other than you can't tell me that was those guys absolute to the death best effort it wasn't they could do more and i think that's what rules trying to point out yeah and it just i don't know it again you should always want to win you know like ty robinson and turner corcoran and anthony they should want to win and that that it, that in and of itself should be your fuel at all times right but sometimes there just needs to be a message of like what is acceptable and what isn't and the, the moment, and I'm not saying that those guys went scorched earth. Bill Self, Dane Altman didn't go scorched earth every time we lost. It was just like the certain kind of losses, you know? Yes. And to yeah. me, that was one of those, that was one of those performances where you break out like the, okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to kill these guys today. You know, we Nick, we were not competitive. Yes. That's, that yeah. to me is my, that's what I, Michigan's better than us at every position. For so sure. I didn't expect us to win. But I know what it looks like when we're competitive. When guys are absolutely laying it out there, it looks different. And that's to me is what was missing. It was it was lacking some competitiveness. Yeah. And so I don't know. I just was I heard that and it got me thinking back to like my my athletic career. And there's just something to a message being sent. Like what the what are we incentivizing that you always talk about that? Like, where's, what are we incentivizing within like yeah. a society, a culture, whatever? Well, to me, what are we punishing to like that? That yeah. should be like, it goes both ways. Like we're incentivizing this. We're punishing this. Like a performance like that should never be acceptable. And you need to make sure f with your actions as a coach that, that you let that happen. Now, the hard part too, though, is like, you got to have the right, group of guys because that could also send people over the edge too you know like yeah. and, you can, and you only have so many like you can only go to that well so many times of like going crazy after a loss you know before yeah. before it's too much i think though you know matt rule's been pretty reasonable yeah so i don't think he's in you know he's not like bear bryant and the junction boys did you ever see that movie i did not Okay, it's like, you know, I think Tom Berenger was Bear Bryant, but basically, like, it was almost like borderline torture. It was like, right. I think it was Texas A&M back in, like, the 50s, and he just, like, 
I mean, it was like borderline torture and like guys were running out in the middle of the night, you know, like that type of thing. But like, I think they went on to like, you know, that's like be basically like a championship type team. Um, And that's like where, okay, there, there is something to that sort of madness, that madness and that, like that some of that borderline stuff, is it like it, it, it gets you an edge. It gives guys that go through it an edge. You know what it feels like when you got an edge. Yeah. You go, I know what I've done, and I know they haven't done it. It gives you an edge, and sometimes that's all you need is the edge. A uh, couple other th- couple things that, that offensively I want to talk about real quick. A couple of couple of stats and things to to chew on with with this offense right now because I I think we know it's. It's been bad, but I, I almost think we don't know just the degree of how bad it has been. So we talked about Nebraska versus Power 5 opponents. So you got Minnesota, Colorado, and now Michigan. They've been shut out in three first halves. We've talked about that. If if we're being honest, they've scored one touchdown. The the one Sims long touchdown run against Colorado. Yeah. Like the Fedoni touchdown, although it sent him to Canton, Ohio, and and got him a gold jacket <laughs> like it was literally with like what 30 seconds left in the game you know yeah. i mean mop up time fleeks 70 plus yarder come on you know wow. mccarthy was over there like getting a lap dance from his girlfriend and making out with his girlfriend <laughs> okay we don't have confirmation that that was his girlfriend. i don't know that to be a fact or not but i can only assume that a lap dance was going on in the sidelines between jj she mccarthy might be going to canton too for her uh, <laughs> do we need to send McCarthy? You've done for jj thank you for the that you're going to do for jj <laughs> you know he would be the first one when they'd unveil the statue it'd be him kissing a girl it's yeah. not his face it's him kissing a girl <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is but so i mean think about that though they basically scored in my opinion like one touchdown when the game was like in matter it mattered. yeah when it mattered they've against power five opponents they've averaged 10 points per game that ranks 129th they've run 55 plays per game against power five teams that that is low that's 130th fewest uh yards per game 313 that's 107 so when you look at those first halves in particular, and I'm going to land the plane here, and I'm going to ask you about this. Through five games total, so this is including Louisiana Tech and Northern Illinois, Nebraska is averaging 4.2 points per half in the first half. Four points a half. They scored zero in the first half against Minnesota, zero against Colorado, 14 against Northern Illinois, seven against Louisiana Tech, and zero against Michigan. One of the things that is concerning about that is, Bo, that first drive of the game, you get to script it. You get to have, like, you know, you got, like, you've watched film all week. You have a great sense of, like, how you're going to attack that defense. It's a little concerning that Marcus Satterfield and Matt Rule and that whole offensive staff, when they've been able to script, they still can't produce. That was something we talked about all the time with frost like i feel like frost his success in first drives of games was usually through the roof remember against ohio state in COVID, they marched down the field even last year with him and whipple they scored on the first drive of the game in four of their first five games last year oklahoma north dakota northwestern all those games like then obviously the wheels kind of fell off that team but is it a little are you a little concerned that even with the script they're not able that they, they ain't they ain't doing anything, dog. They're not doing anything. I mean, they just they don't they don't scare anybody at any point, you know. Like, I, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it, it's yeah, it's they don't they haven't scripted things well. They they've been sloppy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they got to find something. They got to find a way to put points on the board because, and you can't. You can't do this stuff anymore of not scoring in the first half. Like you're better off scoring early and not late. Like you need to be in the game to give your defense a chance. So that your strategy can be, I can run the ball yes. and do some things other than have to pass the rest of the game because the first quarter and a half, you never score. Right. So um, that's putting too much pressure on our defense. It's not a sustainable way to play a football game is not score in the first half and expect your defense to play three good quarters of perfect football and 
then hopefully you'll score somewhere at the end of the game. It's like, that's, that's no, that's, that's how you lose. Yeah. And, and the, the other thing too, with that is like, not only is it, per, not only does it obviously not scoring in the first half and averaging four points, a, a half in the first half, not only does it put pressure on the defense, but it changes the complexion of the game to where you're usually down. And now you can't necessarily just sit there and run the ball. You know, like when you get down 14 points, 21 points, it's harder to just say, hey, stay the course. Let's I formation, ISO, ISO, run the ball. Well, so it, it's like it's a it, it puts pressure on the defense and then it brings out the weaknesses of your offense. I just think like Marcus Satterfield, they, they got to come like this Friday against Illinois. You better have something for that ass on the first drive to get you down the field and get points on the board. And yeah. it, it's frustrating. It, it is. And, you know, it, it's one thing to not score. It's another thing to not score and not win the time of possession. You know, like they're doing both a disservice to our defense. No points. And they're letting, you know, Minnesota, Colorado and Michigan hold the ball on us right they're holding the ball on us we can't win it's just a matter of time before the defense wears out like so yeah it's it's twofold like you've got to score some points and then i think their method to win the game is then even if you can't score a ton of points you hold the ball for bigger stretches and keep it away from the other offense and then our defense is a different defense and then we're fresher and then we give ourselves a chance, right? Then we give ourselves yeah. a chance in all these games. I the, the thing I was thinking about with this scripting thing and with what it's looked like and with, with Marcus Satterfield, one of the things that was always a little perplexing to me was it appeared like Matt Rule hired Marcus Satterfield to come run an offense he wasn't running at South Carolina. You know, like that's yeah. the one thing, at least like he brought Tony White over and was like, dude, just do, like, here's the defense, do what you've been doing. And... I, I think it – I get that there's injuries. I get that there's – you know, the quarterback situation is what it is. But it's just like nobody seems comfortable out there. The quarterback doesn't look comfortable. I think there's – I think some of the sloppiness can sometimes be a product of, like, not being comfortable with what's going on. But I think – I wonder if some of it is like – I wonder how comfortable Marcus Satterfield is – so you're so saying you, plays you think he's this, not comfortable. Is, this is less of what Satterfield wants to do and more of what rule wants to do. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. I don't, I don't know. Um, I do. Yeah. I do think that is what, how rule wants to be, wants to play here. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting to see like what Satterfield's like default, like how he likes to play is. Cause I, yeah. I, I think I only saw, part of a game last year when he was at South Carolina and they seemed to do, they it was like shotgun most of the time there. Yeah. The Spencer Rattler kids shotgun. Yeah. They were, yeah, it seemed like that. Now again, everything looks different when you got more weapons in your, you know, in your, in your arsenal. But like, I just wonder when he's sitting there going, okay, all right, first drive, here's what we're thinking for the first set of plays. And he has to all of a sudden incorporate option. He's like, all right, okay. Like, he's maybe not totally comfortable. There's a difference between being able to, like, hey, I can draw it up on a dry race board and being like comfortable with it and how to like how to how to how to coach it and and implement it into a script and set things up with it and and all those kinds of things. And I just I just wonder how you know his level of comfort with with this thing as well. Again, full disclosure, understand all the injuries and the quarterback limit yeah. limitations and the wide receiver limitations. But you know the the first half stuff has to get better. And in particular, I think of that first drive of the game. Man, the lack of success Nebraska's had at putting points on the board with that has been startling. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's where do you, you mentioned like yeah, f- f- like you even talked about Frost. Like that was. I mean, like there's been a lot of like frost, you know, people bagging on frost, but like you forget, like the guy really knew how to call a game. Like he was a good offensive coordinator. He was creative. And yeah, he, if you gave him time, he was really good at coming up with some, some serious, I mean, he had a great game plan against Michigan in 21 uh, I just remember that Wisconsin, we came out against Wisconsin one year and just was like, we got up on Wisconsin. We got, 
Yeah. Up on Iowa. I mean, I feel like we just had some of those Ohio there. state issues in, yeah. in year one. Yeah. Like I think what he does best, the one thing you can like, he clearly had problems building a culture and being a CEO and overseeing, Hey, I got to be involved in special teams. I got to be involved in this and that, whatever. Like he clearly had limitations with that. But the one thing that dude is, is to me undeniably good at is just game planning, scheming and calling plays offensively. Yeah. Just letting it rip. Yeah, like having like a a feel and a cadence to what's going on. Uh, what do you want to, you know, seven games left here. I wrote down a couple of things of like, what do you want to see down the stretch? And even though this feels like more of a bye week and now you get the final six games, it just does feel like there's like a, Mich- once you got past Michigan, all these teams are kind of the same, you know, like they're, they're similar. Th- here, I'm just going to throw a couple things that I wrote down of what do I want to see in these final seven games. The first thing I wrote down was just clean up the sloppiness. Penalties, ball handling, organization, clean all that stuff up. That's the first one. The other thing I wrote down was, I I wrote down proving that that rush defense is something you can build on. Like, I think you need to start to build a foundation on that side of the ball. And whether it's getting after the quarterback or stopping the run, there's got to be like some foundational thing that gets established that is real because you got to start kind of building it on that side of the ball. Do you feel like it's more you, rush D? Is it is it a crushing I mean, quarterback? Like what foundational things on defense are you looking at? I mean, I don't think I ever think of like it's got to be this one thing it's more like if we're playing solid defense, it all will take care of itself. Right. Like it doesn't matter if you're it's rush defense is good. And, but your pat, like it's got to both kind of be like some, sure. right. Um, I guess for me, I just, I'm more on the eye test of what am I looking at? Like you said, offense is clean up sloppiness defense. Like, are we flying around? Are we tackling? Like, are we just some, are we pretty sound in our defense? Like I thought we were for a few games, like yeah, our first three or four games, I thought we were. So I would actually say like, if we could get back to flying around, um, if you're flying around, you're tackling um, and you're physical, that's what I want to see. I, I don't really, it doesn't have to be like, we have to lead the nation in run defense or I, I'm not concerned with that. I want to see, I want my eyes to see something that go, I know that is good. Um, and then offensively, I need to see, it's clean. We we actually can score a couple of points. We can threaten the other team and hold the ball for a bit, give our defense a chance to win the game. Like right. that's what I want to see from our, our offense. Score some points and keep us in the game, give us a chance to win. Right. Uh, yeah. Cause I think I, I was trying to get specific, but the reality is, which I just maybe the, what I should have said, just build a foundation on that defense. Like a start, start a there step. And I, and I thought, I thought that's what to your point, like I, I thought they were building that early. You know, yeah, Mi- Michigan was just there are another, another level, but I do think we took a step backwards against them. Like we didn't rise to the occasion and play them tough. Not that we would have beat them and not that they wouldn't have scored points, but like we could have played them better and we right. could have played more competitive against them. Like we could have really uh, we could have made them work a lot harder to earn it. It was too easy for them. It yeah. was just like it was just another Thursday practice for Michigan. Da 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 da, la di da da da, touchdown, la di da da da, touchdown. Like, you need to punch them in the face a couple times and make them really pull out their bag of tricks. I mean, I, I think, you know, a lot of people have pointed out, like, oh, what did you expect? They were outmatched or whatever. I, I mean, it, it, like, did you see the Penn State Northwestern game? Like, Northwestern made Penn State work. Now the game ended 41 to 13, you know, yeah. and then the second half that everything fell apart, but like, you know, at one point Northwestern was up 10 to 3, like, you know, and and yeah. and you're and so so for people to be like, "Oh, well what did you expect?" Okay, I mean, is yes, Michigan's more talented than Nebraska. Penn State's more talented than Northwestern and Northwestern made them work and hung in there for a little bit, you know? The game wasn't over at half in Northwestern, right? No. Like that's the difference is the game was over at half in Memorial Stadium on our home turf. Think about that sand. It was over in the first crazy. quarter. It was over in the first quarter. If we're being, I mean, it was over. Yeah. It was over it ten was minutes done. into the game. You it know, so done. so twenty-eight nothing and a half, and you go, 
you know, like your job is, you know, the better team over time usually pulls away and wins. That's how this game usually ends up. Right. But the point is like the first half will tell me more like who's willing to fight and make a run at it. Right. And then it's like, yeah, over time, it's more times than not the better team. It's, it's going to go their way because they got more better players. Time helps them. Right. But if you can't even like in the first half, give any, any effort to, to slow that down. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I just, that felt to me like it just wasn't competitive enough. The the other thing I wrote down and, and th- this he's, it, he, I, I wrote down Harburg, but then it, it expands to the rest of the roster. I think one of the things you got to figure out is like, is Harburg a real option moving forward? And I well, think the, the, it seemed like they're they're still trying to say Sims is Sims is not out of this yet. Yeah, what so. are you thinking that? Because I, I that was something I was gonna I was I had wrote down for for to talk about later. It is interesting how at every moment. Matt Rule never wants to shut. He like goes out of his way to keep the door propped open for Jeff Sims and yeah. to talk up Jeff Sims. Like there kind of feels like the door's not necessarily shut for him to take his job back. I'm not saying it's going to happen this week, but I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think what hurts Harburg is like you know to not score really any touchdowns again. Like he didn't lead one touchdown drive against Michigan. That that hurts him in his like, well, Heine's, Heine's team until, you know yeah. what I mean? Like we could look past that because it's Michigan, but um, if you really want to play Jeff Sims, this is an opportunity now where Harburg, Harburg did leave the door open a little bit. We're like, what did he do that last game that he deserves any more of a chance than Sims really, right? So like, I don't know. I, I still think Harburg, it's it's his job uh, for another game. I think he has like, I think he to me he gets one more game uh, to solidify himself. Like a, a win against Illinois, I yeah. think he, he would like he keeps the job. But I think if he doesn't play well and loses against Illinois, then it's like I think you open the door to Sims again, especially especially with the bye week on the other side of it. Correct. Like if if. Nebraska loses, and if Heine doesn't just go nuclear, if if Heine loses, and or if Nebraska loses, and Harburg was just like okay, then I could see bye week. You're opening it up, see what yeah. happens. I, I guess. Uh, but the but the big thing in terms of what I want to see, like I think a big part of what these final seven games are, and it's not to dismiss this season because the last thing I'm going to I'm write down, I'm going to talk about is winning and gaining some momentum into the off season. But the one thing that these coaches got to find out, they got to figure out like to use rules line is like, who are the lions out there? They need to figure out who on this roster is going to help them. And like, not saying they're going to keep them or run them off, but like who on this roster is a real viable option moving forward and who isn't. And then that's going to shape how they attack the off season and recruiting in terms of the, the most importantly, the portal. So like, yeah. I think these last seven games they they need to be evaluating everybody and shaping yeah. their plan for the off season. Nick, that is such a great, great thought. There is that that's exactly what they need to be. Like, this is the time where let's be real. The season's been a disaster so far. So cool. like, Matt Rule's job is to find out who's real and who's not. Who are the kind of front runners that maybe they say all the right things, but they're when it comes down to it, they aren't they aren't the real deal guys that you want uh, in there fighting when it counts. Uh, and I think it also gives you a chance to be like, which young guys are going to be something special, and who do we think we actually got, and start putting some of those guys out there. I mean, that's really it's a it's a gift to be able to play young guys. Um, Maybe even it's a slightly a bit before they're ready. Um, But like, if they're close, I think you give them some experience because then they can help you next year. You know, like if we go out and lose against Illinois and we lose another game, uh, I think you should consider playing like your most talented, like your most competitive uh, freshman. I agree. Yeah, you got you yeah. got to figure out like, especially if you feel like this season. Now again, you don't want to punt on this season, but like, you need to figure out who on this roster is is going to be a long term option. Yeah, and 
So Malachi Coleman's got to get on the field and you got to like get him the ball, see what happens. You, you know, yeah, I mean, if he's got like, I think though, just because you're a freshman doesn't mean you should play. It's like if you're a freshman and you are, you are a competitive dude, like you are right. a guy that wants it. Cause I think that's to me more than your year. I want the guys that are competitors, the guys you can count on. That's what I want. I, I just, I, I think we have too many guys that are out there that, um, I don't know. Like I'm looking for winners, man. I want guys that are going to compete every play and you know, like they're out to win. They're playing to win. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that might sound obvious. No, it's there's just, there's, there's not as many of those guys as you think there are. Right. (laughs) This is is where you and I were never fully comfortable with kind of what Dion did. It sets an interesting precedent to just run off like an entire team and bring in a whole new group of players. But it's like what we're kind of talking about is is the reason you do that of like maybe maybe yeah. you're just it's in your best interest to just infiltrate a whole bunch of new blood into that locker room. But I, I don't know. I just think it, in general, I wrote down, you got to figure out this roster. Who's a baller? Who's not? It, and then have use that as your template for what you got to go do in the portal. Like, I mean, I think they're going to have to go get some, a quarterback in the portal, like quarterback wide receivers. Um, and then any of those other positions like uh, O line D line that you can get, which are, right. that's, those are harder to fill, but quarterback and receivers, gosh, I got to think you could get some of those guys. And then the, the last thing I wrote down was like, you got to, I wrote down win, but maybe the better way to put it is just like, you got to gain some momentum into the off season. Like there's got to be some, semblance of like feeling good as you head into the off season. Now that now, does that mean they have to go six and they got to get to six wins? I don't know. I mean, that would certainly be ideal, but the season that, that the clock needs to strike zero against Iowa on black Friday. And there, there can't be this feeling that we're all feeling right now. If they go out and lay an egg against Illinois um, versus going and winning Illinois, Nick, I mean, it's going to be the either the best or the worst uh, bye week of the in the that I can remember because yeah. I mean the fan base needs a win bad right now they are they are in a a fragile place no and, doubt um, yeah I, I mean even if it's a they could lose close and it's okay if they lay an egg like a Michigan egg it's like a good. thirty to nothing egg something like that Nick. I don't even want to think about what fans are going to do. I don't either. And I don't, I don't want to think about it. I'm not even I know. I know this. I mean, this it's, you know, you don't want to make every game to be like the Super Bowl, but it's, it's an important game on Friday. Rule said it himself. He's like, you're going to find out a lot about us, find out about me, find out about the players on Friday. I, li- I mean, I like it in the sense that he's putting more pressure on himself. He He's, he's self-imposing a little pressure, which is, okay. yeah. I mean, maybe that's what he needs too. But um, yeah, I mean, he's laying it down. Like, but but he, he's backing it up. He, he's he's making them practice. Like he's he's making them thud, man. It's a day after a game. It's a statement. So, yeah. um, but you know, I also think maybe that's it's a Friday game, so they're moving their practices up for sure. Day, like you know? some of that could have been conven- yeah. not convenient. Like it just it kind of the 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 yeah. week lent itself to that. You know, well, yeah, you you would then do that, I guess. But, but whatever, I just it's a day after the game. Like the day after the, the game, and they, they went hard. Like, you know how I mean. That day after a game, if you're a running back, you just have, it's like feels like you were just in a car crash. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's hard to it's hard to go strap it up and go go back at it again on on Sunday the next day. But okay, so we'll all right. Coming up next, we're gonna get we're, we'll give our predictions. We'll get we'll get into the Illinois game. I did write down. I'm, I'm gonna throw. I ranked the final seven games easiest to hardest. I'm gonna bounce that off you quick. Uh, but first, I got to tell you about Pella. Uh, if if you want some peace of mind of installing windows, doors into your home, Pella is the way to go. All the different testing that Pella does, extreme cold, extreme heat, extreme weather, I mean, like power washing your window with like crazy water, all that stuff. So you have the confidence that whatever is installed window wise is perfect. You have a Pella expert out there installing it as well. The installation makes a difference. And 
Again, we told you about the showrooms in Lincoln and Omaha. Go stop by them. I've been inside of them. They're amazing. Like, take it from me. In a couple of weeks, they're going to be putting a new front door, new bay window on, on our home. I couldn't be more excited. And the whole process was so much easier because of Pella, the showroom. Uh, our My wife's new best friend, Debbie, giving her samples, different stuff. It's just been fantastic. So check them out, PellaOmaha.com. That's PellaOmaha.com. They gave me a koozie, too. They got it right there, Nick Butt Podcast. It's fantastic. Okay, and then the other thing we got to talk about is Shoot360 Lincoln. Again, membership-based basketball training facility for players of all ages and skill levels. The the nice thing is the, the convenience with the app. Whatever time works for you, you set that appointment in the app as a member, and then you are secured. You have a shooting bay all to yourself where you're going to be able to get five to ten minutes of coaching with a floor coach there, but you're going to be able to get up a lot of reps on our arm machines, our automatic rebounding machines, a big net around the hoop where you're going to get 300-plus shots up. You have the patented technology giving you real-time objective feedback on every single shot. You are going to become a better shooter if you commit to being a member at Shoot360. And 30 minutes of ball handling and passing on our skills courts with the passing walls where you, for, for kids, they love it, where it's like a video game where you're playing bug smash. You're, there's like a spaceship game you're playing. The kids just go crazy for it. So all these things help get you better faster. Schedule your free official recruiting visit workout today. Go to shoot360.com backslash Lincoln, shoot360.com backslash Lincoln. Okay, Bill, real quick. Ranking the final seven games easiest to hardest. Just easiest game, I put Northwestern. Now, easy is relative. Like, I don't think anything's going to be easy from here on out. Because the the irony of this is, like, if this was done for all these other teams, they would all be like, all right, easiest game's Nebraska, yeah. you know. <laughs> So I, I'm fully aware, but like I would go, I would go Northwestern. I think it's the least talented team left on the schedule. They still are yeah. dealing with some Pat Fitzgerald issues, but I'll, I'll say Northwestern at home. What do you, what do you think? Coming North off a of home, and then you know probably Purdue, just because they got a, young, a new young coach and a team that's uh, you know I haven't got to see him play, but I, it seems like they had kind of mixed results. It's been up and down. Yeah. It's, it's it's been up and down. They just hammered Illinois, but it's been it's been up and down. Uh, so I put Northwestern Purdue. Then I put at Michigan state. I just, you lose your head coach. Now they put up a valiant effort, uh, on the road, uh, at night at Iowa, but man, you lose Mel Tucker at some point that's got to catch up to you. Uh, I, th- then I put Illinois. I, I don't know. It's a struggling team. Um, but I, I still feel like this game, I don't know. This game's tough to me still. Um, I think that's right. I mean, Michigan State, it, I always think there's just – being on a team when a coach is fired is a very delicate place. And I think they're probably in a more delicate state than the Illinois team is. So I would put uh, – yeah. Michigan State Michigan easier than, than Illinois. Easier than Illinois. Um and Illinois is down this year. They lost a lot of good players last yeah. year. So they're sort of just – it's sort of a bounce a, a bounce down year for them. And um, so, uh, what's funny is, like, uh, none of these teams seem that good. They don't seem terrible. They just don't seem great. It's just sort of like they're they're like a right around us or a little better. Um, <laughs> however yeah. you want to rank it. Like, we may have a better defense, but they all probably have better offenses. So it's, it's hard to judge – what should happen, but I think it could go any way on every one of those games. Yeah. Uh, what about, okay. The last three, Iowa, Maryland, Wisconsin, that's the, that's the order I put Iowa. I have Wisconsin as the hardest game on the road. I still, I mean, I know Maryland's five and zero, oh, but I'm just, Wisconsin's got a culture. Uh, Fickle can coach camp. Randall be rocking. Yeah. Um, then I put Maryland, I, I, I put Maryland above Iowa. Maryland to his brother they're five and oh to his brother Bo in five games he's thrown for almost 1500 yards 13 touchdowns Nick all I know is quarterbacks 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 my brain is shifting towards the the better quarterback is going to usually always win yeah so I and then and then that's why I honestly that was the deciding factor on putting Iowa easy a little bit easier than Maryland just because their offense is terrible. They just lost their starting quarterback for the year in Cade McNamara. It's still Iowa, so those are going to be tough. But that's how I would – that's kind of how I would rank it. Is it is 
you disagree with any of that or is that Maryland, about Maryland over over Iowa and I haven't got to see Wisconsin much but I would assume that's pretty us going to Camp Randall is never good. It just right. we've been, we just can't win there. Yes. Um, okay. You want, a couple of things before we get into this game. Uh, Matt Rule said no Rhymer again. Huge blow. No Singleton for a while. Uh, I'm not sure what that timeline is. I don't think it was an ACL, but no Singleton for sure this week. So we saw what the defense looked like without those two guys. It's a little concerning. Um, they did say Cam Lenhart was maybe on track to play. That could help get another guy out there that could maybe win and get to the get to the quarterback. But no Reimer and Singleton, man, that's concerning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With this game, this Illinois game, so the spread is like three, three and a half in favor of Illinois. Vegas sets the over-under at 43 was the last time I saw it. I would take that under in that. I mean, good Lord. Uh I think a lot of what this game comes down to is sure. It's about I me. Mean, both teams are coming off tough losses and it's about, you know, what's, what's in that locker room, but it's, this is also about what coach can press the right buttons with their team in during a crisis, you know, like both teams have struggled, both teams coming off bad blowout losses. Both teams are kind of searching for confidence, which coach has their team fully invested in them and, this is where like Brett Bielema, it's a tough, it's a tough guy to go against because he is a veteran, experienced, successful coach that has navigated these sorts of situations. This isn't like the Purdue coach who's never done this, right? Like Bielema has done this. So has Rule. Um, but that I that's like as to me, this game's as much about like the emotion and mentality than anything necessarily like schematically to me. I think this is to me, I see this game playing out like whoever can start fast is going to win because if they start fast, we're, uh, I don't think we're at the point where we can ever come back. But I think if we start fast, we'll actually like play the game that we've been meaning to play. Right. You know, like we've been in position to win, uh, with the way our defense have played for, has played for a handful of games, and our, if our offense can get out and start fast and score a couple points, I think we can win. We can play that game. So I'm looking to see who strikes first, right? The first quarter, I think, is going to say a lot about this game. So I'm sort of like I'm, I'm putting my emphasis on the first quarter. Like whoever starts fast is going to win. Yeah, which obviously doesn't bode well for Nebraska potentially, but correct. Uh, <laughs> but it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a it, not a great environment Friday night game. I don't think it's going to be a big crowd, so you're going to have to bring your own energy if you're if you're Nebraska. But I, that's a good point. Like, I just think with the, with the the state of both programs, like whatever team gets punched in the mouth first might have a hard time. Like Nebraska goes and gets down fourteen. I don't know what kind of I don't know if they're gonna how much they're gonna get they're gonna rally and and fight back. Same thing with Illinois. You know, you punch them in the mouth and get up ten nothing right away. I don't know how interested they are in in battling, but yeah. I agree. First quarter is going to be huge. Uh, where are you? I hate this. I'm I'm leaning towards Illinois. <laughs> I mean, uh, Nick, I can't do it. I can't do that. You know this. Not against Illinois. I took Michigan last week, and it pained me, but it was the right move. Of course it was. I can't I can't pick Illinois over us. I can't do that. <sighs> I mean, do you mean it, though? Hey, make the case. Okay, make the case, man. You think that's yes. the I mean, Nick, we get out and we can score. If we can score 10 or 14 in the first half, I think we score – I see it playing out like a 17-16 game, like something like that. It's like a 14-13 or 17. It's like going to be like a 17-14. Yeah. It's going to be a one to three point game is the, in my mind. Uh, and I think we can win it. I think we're going to find a way to manufacture uh, some points and our defense is going to rally back a little bit and play a little bit better game. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's what's hard about this is like I'm leaning Illinois, but I think it's going to be. 14, 13, 17, 14, 17, 16, 13, 10. And like, yeah, neither team's going to run away from the other one. Uh, I just, 
when I look at Nebraska's offense, I look at this is Harburg's first road start. Now, he did play on the road at Colorado, but this is his first road start combined with no Reimer, no Singleton. I just, and I have a real, I respect, I have a lot of respect for Bielema. I do too. I'm, I'm leaning towards picking Illinois 17, 14, but you can do that. So I can give you, I can give you some, I'm going to have yeah. some words for you. Yes. I'm going to have a few things to say to you. Uh, it, but I it just, does, I can, Nick, Nick, if you, if you cut me here, I bleed red. I Apparently, bleed I'm bleeding. Red. Uh, burnt. What's Illinois orange? Whatever kind of orange that is. Apparently, you cut me. I'm bleeding like Brett it's Bielema orange. Orange, right? orange. The orange crush is coming out of me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just. Nick, trust I me. Like, there's a lot of people. You're like, if your life is on the line, you're like, <laughs> right. Don't ask me that question right now. You know. Yeah, but it it, it, it either way, I think it's going to be a. I, like you said, I don't. I mean, to me, for over under forty three, I'd be shocked if it if that thing hits the over. If it it's if yeah. if that if that over hits, to me, Nebraska got spanked. Yeah, if the over hits and it's a it's a big margin of difference, I'm thinking Nebraska loses. If that's yeah. the, if the scenario is one team scores thirty five and the other scores seven, um, what are the chances were the thirty five? Not very good. Not good at all to me. So. I don't know. I, I I think the the domino effect of Reimer and Singleton is real. Uh, they talked about having to put Tommy Hill like he had to go to defense oh, for most of the Tommy game. Tommy Hill again, huh? <laughs> well, rule. I mean, you should. Did you hear rule? Rule was gushing over Tommy Hill again. He was like using him as an example to show the players in film like what they want. I'm like, I mean, he was like, give me give me a team full of Tommy Hills and I'm good. I'm like. Man, okay. I like maybe Tommy Hill is like a dog. Maybe we're practice. missing. Maybe I, we're missing something. I guess I've had a different image in my head of like, I don't know. I, I just I see flopping on each side of the ball. I always feel like that's not a good sign to me. Yeah, I, and like don't get me wrong. Like I see the athleticism and the explosion and all this stuff. Yeah. Like I see, I see all of that. But man, we're a, we're a season and a half of. Tommy Hill at Nebraska, and I just don't know. I'm, I'm. There's has not been. There have not been very many like positive plays with him. That's. What I mean, like here's what I here's what I look for. Like, if you were to say Tommy Hill's the best route runner on the team, I'd go, oh, that tells me something about Tommy Hill. Um, or he's the he's the best lockdown quarterback cornerback we got, or he's the best tackler we have. Like something like that. It's but with him, it's always like, oh, Tommy. He's fast and man, we got to find a place for him. Like it's, it's always, it's always like Tommy in the sense of like he could do something for us, but we don't know what it is. And right. I always go, well, why not? Why isn't he good at one of those things? Right. Yeah, because they're, they're I want just... him to be the best route runner. Do you know why? Because the best route runner gets open, and then and, and you know, like you can use him on offense every play. Where like I feel like you can't use him on offense or defense every play. I really hope at some point because like I hope Tommy shuts us all up, you know, and like I would love that. Like, I would love. I, I mean, because I, I would. I mean, I was. I was actually like. I mean, I've. I have enjoyed. I enjoyed his willingness to want to bring every kickoff out and the confidence of like I am going to take this thing to the house no matter what. But I just hope this isn't a window into like it is interesting when you think about rule. We've talked about his philosophy in recruiting. He wants just like athletic guys, and he'll yeah. teach them how to play football. And it's interesting that he is drawn towards Tommy Hill because, like, Fast. Tommy, I bet Tommy's athletic, and I think Tommy likes football. But like, at some point, that's gotta that that's gotta translate into something positive. But like, I still game. don't know what position he plays. Like, he's kind of the corner. He's kind of a receiver. He's kind of the returner. I kind of want him just to be one of those and be good at it. You know, right. like, right. But he, I guess he played more DB last game. So I mean, it was like, yeah, that's what they said. And Newsom had to slide to safety, which, you know, so there's just a, you know, a, a domino effect. I mean, Reimer's their best player. Like yeah. Javen Wright has had a good year, but Javen Wright missed a couple of tackles on some key third downs that if that's Reimer, you know, like Reimer's probably getting that dude down. So yeah. I, I don't know. It just, I, I I did, do they they, say, like, did they say what, who's the permanent news? Is, is Newsom going to be so? Is Tommy going to the corner and is Newsom going to be? The that's safety? what. That's what 
it sounds like they did more of in Michigan because of yeah. when Singleton went down. Now that could have been an on the fly. Like now that they've had like a a week to know that they're not going to have Singleton, I don't know yeah. what that picture looks like because I don't know if you necessarily want to take Newsom out of his out of his spot. Yeah. You know, uh, so I don't I don't I'm not sure what what that is gonna what yeah. that is gonna look like. The other safety roles gonna be important. I mean, they got Kobe. It was Kobe. Kobe Bretts from West Side. Yep. Is it Betts or Bretts? I'm not sure. Kobe Bre- I think it's Kobe Bretts. Let's go with that. Yeah, Kobe Bretts. He's from West Side. He's the safety. He actually got some playing time uh as well. But we'll see if that's like if they want that to be a permanent thing or if that was like, you know, somebody didn't have enough rep, like if Newsom didn't have enough reps at right. the other spot. But and we'll um, see if like a guy like Fleeks because of his splash play like this fleeks get some get some touches I don't, I don't know running back uh you know cram session you know it's like uh before that that economics test that you didn't, yeah, didn't go to class in there dog yeah semester and you go i guess i gotta study i gotta get you know so uh you know it's not ideal but he did look pretty good i mean he looked like he, looked he, had, he, well, he had a decent feel for running you know mm-hmm. like he had a good feel for a guy that's a receiver so you could tell he played some high school running back because he no doubt he had the no field. no doubt about it. But yeah, I don't know. I got to think with with how much Rule loves Tommy Hill and how much they're going to continue to like try to get him on the field and get him in situations where he can make a play. Like at some point, you assume like I think Tommy Hill at some point is going to make a play. Let's hope so. I hope Tommy Hill makes a lot so of. Do I. Like, we kind of have been giving him guff, which is probably not fair, but um, they see something in him. Uh, they like him. I hope he proves us wrong because we're kind of scratching our heads because we're not really seeing the thing, right? We're like, show us the thing. Uh, so I hope Tommy shows us the thing. I hope he yeah. he finds a spot. Maybe it's corner and he's he can be the guy. And that would be great. Maybe he comes to life there because, you know, he started for a couple games last year. Yeah. So he there's something about him that everybody wants to play him. Um, it's just like, I don't know, man. I, I'm just, it just hasn't worked. It's just as clear. You listen to rule talk about him and it makes sense. Cause some, we talked about early was like, he got the reverse uh, against Colorado. I think he got, he got the deep, and ball, the deep ball against, against Minnesota. Minnesota. He get like, he, he get, he got a deep ball against La Tech. I think it was yeah. like, like he gets to be the kickoff returner. He gets to like, those things are sometimes like, not only do you want you get him to best player, but they're like rewards a little bit for, yes. for people. And like rule clearly loves him some Tommy Hill. So like the more rule talks about him, the more you're like, okay, now I'm understand. I'm understanding like he's in such good standing with the head coach. Why he would be like, Hey, we got a reverse in, in the script. Who do we want to run that to rules? Like Tommy Hill dog. That's my guy, you know? <laughs> so uh. I don't know. So you're, so you're going like 14, 13, I'll go 17 to 16, Nebraska. Nebraska. I'm going 17, 14, Illinois. I think it's going to be a, a kind of a dead. I think it's going to be kind of an ugly grinder. Not a not the prettiest game in not the world. A high flying scoring explosion, Nick. Uh, yeah. I I would would think not, but we'll see. This is a big game, though, man. Like you like you talked about a couple of minutes ago. Like, I just don't want to see what things look like. If they go out there and they don't play well, it's just not going to be a very – and then you go into the bye, and then you have what could be maybe the least exciting home game on the schedule left in Northwestern, you know, like – Or or you can go out and you can win it, have a bye week, get better, and have a chance to go, you know, go above 500 against Northwestern, which is actually like our fan base right now would take that, Nick. We'd oh, be yeah. taking that, and we'd be excited about it. That's we'd where think, we're at right now. Yeah. We'd be excited about beating Northwestern and going four and three. We'd be like, hell yeah. Well, I mean, that's I mean, if you win this weekend, you get a bye, you're able to get hopefully Reimer and maybe Singleton, some other guys healthy. You're able to work on yourself, too. Like yeah. a bye week allows you, which they, they probably need really bad. And then you have two, two straight home games against Northwestern and Purdue, like, I don't know. You go, you go, man, it's winning that elusive three in a row on the, on the table. If you can win, but it all starts with winning this game. I don't know. You, you don't want to be like, if you lose this game, you lose this game, the path to getting to a bowl game becomes impossible almost. 
Yeah, and it's just the psyche, like for the psyche of our yes. fan base, please win. <laughs> yes. Yes, no doubt about it. I guess we'll we'll wrap it up there. We're about an hour in. You probably got some. Uh, what's what's on the schedule tonight in Idaho Falls? What I mean, a, a, just a walk with Bo Rude himself. Walk in the woods, and uh, I'm gonna go find a steak dinner, Nick. Oh, in honor you, of you, buddy. Ribeye. What are we gonna do? Ribeye all day, all night, man. Oh God, we well, get. I will let you go. Go enjoy your walk. Go enjoy your ribeye, and hopefully, I'll see you in person this weekend when we're talking about hopefully a Nebraska win. Okay. All right, boy. All right, big dog. Yes, sir. A Heard at Sports Network production.